Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer Hawkins and I'm the Community Director at the Secular Buddhist Association. I have never done a recording of a guided meditation and I've actually led very few meditations. So forgive me if this comes out a little rough or raw. Um, however, I thought it might be a little fun to try to recreate a, uh, a guided meditation that Mark Nickelbein, another director at SBA, did uh, Sunday, which I believe was the 28th of May, 2017. Um, so that week's theme for our online meditation practice circle was loving yourself. And Mark decided to do a modified version of Tonglen, which I'll try to put a link down in the bottom of the page. Uh, but it was it was inspired by a book where someone took the Tallinn practice and interpreted it through Zen, and then Mark put a little bit of his own spin on it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the people that were there that day were either a little sick, or our sleep schedule had been messed up, so we were really sleepy, so we didn't get everything out of that particular practice circle that we were hoping to. We were just experiencing a lot of poor, a lot of drowsiness, and recently we've been trying to remember to record our guided meditations, not the discussion part, but just the guided part, and we forgot on Sunday. So we don't have that recording. And as I was thinking about it, you know, there was more than one person who was like, oh, I wish I had the recording so I could like do this again when I'm feeling a little bit better and I'm more awake. But we don't have it, and Mark's really super busy with a new job and everything. So I thought maybe I would try to record something similar that could be posted somewhere on the SBA website so people could try to follow along with that. Um, and I just noticed that there's some details that I might want to give viewers. <laughs> I'm an anxious person in case that's not immediately apparent. But um, Practice Circle is our online meditation event. We meet every other Sunday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, which is 6 Pacific, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern Time, U.S. And it's a free online guided meditation that has different themes every week. And I'll post the link down the bottom again, um, down the doobly-doo, as they say on the internet, that will have information on, you know, how you can start attending practice circle if you'd like to and we'd love to see you there. Um, that said, Tonglen. So what is Tonglen? Everyone watching this, not everyone watching this video will know what Tonglen is and one of the main pieces of feedback that we got on Sunday was, oh I like how it wasn't a very detailed or drawn out practice. We got right into the practice. So I'm not going to go into the whole long history of everything, but I will say that Tonglen is a specific meditation practice that is from Tibet, the Vajrayana tradition, and it's a type of compassion meditation where in most basic terms you visualize something that is negative, harmful, painful, and you visualize breathing that in on the inhalation, holding it, for a second, you know, allowing it to be fully experiencing the emotion, uh, noticing how you can have that emotion and just observe it without getting attached to it. And then as you're holding it in your heart space, as is often said, you can breathe out compassion, uh, compassion towards that specific thing or person or event, or maybe a general sort of meta or love and kindness feeling. Um, and there's different interpretations. Uh, there are some interpretations of Tonglen where the practice is thought to be very literally true, where you breathe in some aspect of suffering and through a, through a process it's transformed into a positive. And then there's less literal interpretations found in Tibetan schools as well as in secular Buddhism, where it's more of an, of an opportunity to realize that you can breathe in those negative things that you can allow them to just sit without judgment, without getting caught up in the narrative, without becoming reactive to them. And as they sit with you, 
over time, your heart will naturally turn that into compassion. Basically, the idea is if you work with the practice enough, you can recognize that the natural human tendency is towards compassion and towards transforming things into compassion. Um, so that is basic tolerance. And for those who may or may not have experienced the tunneling, it's one of the more difficult meditation practices, I would say, at least for those of us who are not uh, traditionally brought up in a Tibetan background, because it's so contrary to what we often hear, especially here in the West. Um, here in the West, a lot of the talk is, you know, don't focus on the negative, don't don't take it in. Like, it's very much a pushing away of the negative, which isn't necessarily the best thing, usually, anyways. Um, but the whole idea of actively concentrating on it, allowing it to be, fully experiencing it, taking it in, and then pushing it back out is very foreign, and a lot of people can struggle with it. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I actually have like four anxiety disorders. So Tonglin has always been like a struggle for me because me focusing on negative things or taking negative things tends to be a very not good idea for me specifically. Um, however, I recently had the pleasure of being able to listen to a guided meditation by Lama Rod Owens over in Massachusetts who did a version of Tonglin that dealt with anger um, and betrayal. Uh, specifically, we were talking in the context of the U.S. and with tensions being what they are right now, but his version really helped me to see a Tonglin that would not be as much of a struggle and there wouldn't be all that adversity there. So taking a little bit of what I learned there and then my experiences with Mark on Sunday, I think I've got a pretty good handle on how Tonglin, like Tonglin's always a good and useful practice, but for people who specifically might struggle with some of that breathe in the negative, breathe out the positive part, right, this might be a good meditation. So bringing it back around to Mark's theme from Sunday, and I've got a little timer at the bottom, and I keep looking, and I'm like, oh, it's been seven and a half minutes, am I rambling my own internal dialogue? But, um... <laughs> Mark wanted to focus on loving yourself, and he actually quoted that old Whitney Houston song, uh, The Greatest Love of All. There we go. Um, and for me, I actually thought of sort of the parable of the poisoned arrow, and uh, it's from the Pali Canon, and I'll just click over to this other window, because I never remember exactly. It's the Maji Mana kind of 63. Anyways, the parable of the poison arrow. And in that one, uh, a young a young Brahmin approaches Gautama Buddha and, you know, asks, you know, is the cosmos eternal and some other questions. And he basically goes, you know, how can I follow you? How can I become a bhikkhu if you don't answer these specific questions for me? And the Buddha's response was, if a man gets shot by a poison arrow, and I'm just summarizing him, a man gets shot by a poison arrow and says, no, don't take it out, don't give me anti-venom, don't do anything for it, let me just lay here, tell me exactly who shot the arrow, tell me what kind of bow, tell me what kind of bowstring, tell me what kind of wood the arrow's made out of, tell me the guy's name, his family, why he shot me, it's just a whole list of things. You tell me all that before you can take me over to the hospital and treat me. And Gautama Buddha's point was you know, you're sitting there dying, and I could try to give you all this information, but in the end, you still have a poisoned arrow sticking out of your chest, and you're dying. And insisting on all those answers before you get started is not going to help you, and in fact, is going to get in the way and make things worse for you. So I bring this up because, and I can't quite remember where, um, I've heard people relate the idea of the parable of the poisoned arrow to what we do to ourselves. So if we do, like if something in life goes wrong, let's say, let's say someone breaks up with you after a long-term relationship or a marriage or anything like that, you might sit there and go, well, what did I do wrong? What's wrong with me? And 
you know, instead of just focusing on that one pain from the breakup or on, you know, that one issue in front of you, you start to internalize it and turn it into attacking yourself. So you've added poison to the arrow that's already embedded in you. Um, and again, I can't remember who said that, but it was a really great idea that I took with me. So the idea here is that whatever arrows you've got sticking in you right now, there's going to be the temptation to add to it and make it worse with their own self-narrative by saying all these things like, this is my fault, you know, I deserve this, all that negative self-talk. And um, another thing that I've also heard, and this I've heard more in psychology circles, but a question that I invite you to sit and ask yourself is, if your friend was going through whatever situation, having whatever arrows stuck in them, would you talk to your friend that way? No. No, you wouldn't. You would say something like, don't blame yourself, don't focus on that, I love you, if you, you know, this is a new beginning, like, you would do those things. But we, in the West, in my experience, almost never do that. It is so much easier for us to love others than to love ourselves. So what we're going to do with today's practice, hey, 11 minutes and 30 seconds, <laughs> is we're going to use this tunneling practice to first, you know, pick your arrow, pick something that's really troubling you and that there's been a lot of negative self-talk around. You're going to visualize it. You're going to bring it to mind and you're going to breathe it in. And you're going to let it sit there and not judge it. And you can probably hear the cat in the background. You're going to sit there and just fully experience those emotions and not get caught up in the narrative and the story. Just let it sit there. And then as you let it sit in the heart space for a minute, you're going to re direct some compassion towards it. So let's say, let's go with our breakup analogy again. Okay, I've got this breakup going on. You know, how is it my fault? What could I have done differently? Why don't they love me anymore? There's something wrong with me. Whatever it is you're saying. And instead of saying that, you're going to visualize yourself instead of as the self, as a friend. And you're going to practice saying what you would say to a friend. And you're going to exhale that love and that positivity. So, <sighs> Let's get started. And I'm just going to say ding because I don't have a fancy bell. Um, so first, get in whatever position is comfortable for you but not so comfortable that you're going to fall asleep. Um, you can lay down if you have to. You can also sit in a traditional position uh, on the floor, cushion under your bottom, lotus position with the legs crossed. Or you can sit in a chair, which is what I'm doing right now. Have your back straight but not stiff. Um, try to make sure your elbows are a little, that they're supported by something, by a desk, by a pillow, so they're not bothering you. Get comfortable. Both feet in contact with the floor. Sit up straight and take a deep breath. Ding! So in these first few minutes, I'd like you to start at the very top of your head and see if there's any tension there. Go ahead and relax the tension or experience the lack of sensation that you might encounter at the top of your head and then slowly move down. Find your forehead and release any tension that you might find there. Then move along to the rest of your face, especially around the eyes. There might be tension near the nose, in the jaw. Breathe in. And on the out breath, allow all those spots to relax. Next, move on to your neck, especially the back of your neck. Breathe in, and on the out breath, release all the tension in your neck.
Then move on down to your shoulders and your upper back. Breathe in. And on the out breath, release your tension. Now your middle and lower back. Breathe in. And on the out breath, release all the tension that you find there. Then consider your upper chest. Breathe in. And on the out breath, release any tension that you may find there. And if you don't find any tension, that's fine. Just relax in the lack of sensation. Next, consider your abdomen. Breathe in. And on the out breath, release any tension you may find there. Then move your focus down towards your groin or pelvis. Breathe in. And on the out breath, relax any tension you may have there. Next are the thighs. Breathe in. And on the out breath, release any tension you have holding in your thighs. Move down to your calves. Breathe in, and then on the out breath, release any tension that you have in your calves. Last but not least, there are the feet. Breathe in, and then on the out breath, release any tension you have from your ankles down through your toes. Now that you're a little more aware of your body and a little more relaxed, we're going to focus on our breath. So breathe in and try to focus on the sensation of inhaling all the way through. And then hold that breath for just a second and then exhale. Focusing on the sensation of exhalation all the way through. And we're just going to focus on our breath for a few minutes here. Now go ahead and bring to mind an arrow that's been sticking in your side recently. It could be any sort of negative experience, anything that you're beating yourself up over. And the invitation here isn't to get caught up in feelings or being reactive or your own narrative, but you're going to bring it to mind, fully experience the emotions you have, And then see if you can breathe out compassion towards yourself. Okay. 
in breath. Think about what's been bothering you. Out breath. Try to send some love to your own self. You may find yourself wanting to push back against whatever emotions you're experiencing. But if possible, you want to try to not push back and just let them be. As you inhale whatever negative emotions or situations you've been going through and allow them to be, ask yourself if the emotions become more intense or if they stay the same or if they start to diminish. And now to shift gears a little bit, as you bring these negative experiences and emotions to mind, if you concentrate on them for a minute, consider what you might say to a friend who's experiencing the same thing. Now go ahead and kind of imagine that you are talking to yourself as if you're a friend. And try to evoke some of that same compassion towards yourself or say some of those things towards yourself. If you're having a hard time, sometimes it helps to kind of hug yourself. Give yourself a hug.
When was the last time you said to yourself, I love you, or I love me? When was the last time you said that you were smart, capable, lovable? When was the last time that you said that you were pretty? Spend these last few minutes just showering yourself with love. It might even be helpful to express a little gratitude to yourself. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you, body, for carrying me around all day. Thank you for finding the strength to overcome life's difficulties and to continue down the path and to practice the Dhamma. Thank you, and I love you. Ding! So, without coming out of that special mind state that you've hopefully cultivated. Go ahead and relax. Move the body however it needs to be moved. Come out of your hug. Readjust your position. Now normally during a practice circle, this would be the point where we would split up into smaller breakout groups and discuss our experiences before coming back together for a little bit of a large group discussion. and. Uh, a reading of a poem or a sutta. But since this is a guided meditation for home, I'm going to skip that part. However, the invitation is to consider how you can keep practicing self-compassion and what you love about yourself and what you're thankful about yourself. And saying that to yourself sometimes. Thank you all for joining me, and I'm sure it's not exactly like what Mark did, and I just hope that it's a helpful, helpful substitution. Thank you for allowing me to try to guide you.